Alrighty, well, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast, and this one here, um, it's gonna be, uh, hang on. Okay, but anyway, um, this is gonna be a bit of a mess here. Um, originally, there was gonna be some things I wanted to talk about, um, that I've been working on over time, but, um, re but, uh, I'll, I'll probably talk about this later, but, um, it's got a, Something came up on my YouTube recommendations. Um, I started watching it. I watched it once, and but again, I'll explain more on this later. But um, I, but I basically had to call an audible. Okay. Here, let me let me at least get this going first. Um, this is two hours peaceful lake views in 4K. Uh, this is not by choice. Those that know me know that I'm not. I'm not a real big fan of these kind of uh, of these kind of kind of videos. These scenic these scenic landscapey lake lake thingies. They're just old and tired. But under the circumstances, I couldn't find anything else. I did actually find a. I wanted to use a moon. I wanted to play a moon call. It's one of Jupiter's moons. I can't. I totally forgot the name of it. But yeah, but it would have been it would have been too distracting for what I wanted to do. I mean, because it, it had these, it had all kinds of these off the wall goofy sounds, but, but again, um, I kind of need to focus here, because like I, like I said, this is just gonna be a, it was gonna be a nice, a nice good time pseudo cast, but like I said, something came up recently, so it, 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 it kind of redirected this whole thing. So, but let me go ahead and get this going. And I need to need to sound check this. Here. Let's just jack it up to the max. I mean, it's it's a freaking peaceful lake. I shouldn't have to have the volume turned down on it. So, um, but anyway, I'll go ahead and um, um, I'll go ahead and just just I'll start with the stuff that I was orig originally wanting to talk about, um. To start with, um, I watched a more of a, a movie called Indie Game, the movie. Uh, I talked about this yesterday. It's a it's a documentary about these indie game developers. Um, are they uh, the one uh, the ones who made Braid, Super Meat Boy, and Fez? It was just uh, just talking about them. Well, I'm already losing interest in this doc now. They're kind of. I mean, not 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 their fault alone, but when they start showing their uh, when they start showing off their personal lives, like the the guy who created uh, Super Meat Boy, kind of a I can't remember his name. He's kind of got a kind of pudgy, um, like Edward McMillan or something like that. But yeah, they're showing him like sleeping on the couch, and then he's he's proposed he's proposing to his girlfriend, that kind of thing. Stuff like that, I don't really get into that much. You know, like I said, I don't I don't really want to see somebody's personal lives. You know, I, I'm more interested in just, you know, how they came to make the game they make. You know, you know that kind of stuff. Oh, how can I put it? I'm more into somebody's, I'm more into somebody's life, not their lifestyle. But like, like I said, it's really hard for me to explain, but I think um, this documentary here was was delving a bit too deep into their personal lives, so I'm probably gonna, I'll probably end up getting the re giving the rest of this vi this documentary a miss. Yeah, and it was showing like the uh, other creator, Super Meat Boy, he was like sitting down and having dinner with his family, that kind of thing. That kind of stuff, I'm not into. I guess the the mundane aspects of a person's life. I mean, I already know they're human beings, so I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm, so I'm pretty sure they already have this kind of life outside of uh, designing video games. I don't need to see this. So, oh, and I forgot to mention that I'm having a can of V8 Energy peach mango flavored. So, and I'll also go ahead and say that there's going to be a chance that uh, this video 
definitely might be going over long. But like I said, um, something pretty important happened shortly before I, before I was going to start doing this. So, um, oh, and um, and instead of doing a pinball stream, I just went ahead and recorded a one-hour session. So that's also one of the reasons why um, I'm a little bit late on making this. Uh, cause got it all set up and everything, and um, being the moron that I am, I started up, I started uploading this video to YouTube, totally forgetting that there was a copyrighted Star Wars music on it. So I, I had to sit there and, so I'm sitting here basically doing busy work for over an hour until the video gets uploaded, and it, it didn't dawn on me until the video actually started processing that I had Star Wars music on it. So, um, so normally what happens in that situation, and again, those that know me know that I, I prefer to do it like this, is if, um, if there's any, if there's anything copyrighted on my video, if my video gets flagged for copyright, I prefer to delete it immediately. Because, um, one thing I do not want is ads on my video. It's, it's also one of the reasons why all of my videos our Creative Commons videos. They're all free to use. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want, I don't want revenue or anything like that. I don't want, um, I, I have no intention of having my videos monetized. And so one of the, and again, one of the, and one of the other reasons why I do this is, you know, it's really, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, I think, um, legendary YouTuber Emperor Lemon also complains about this as well because uh, he is he is constantly having a haggle with all uh, the the copyright claimants over like video footage and music footage and stuff like that that he puts on his videos you know it's like all this um uh, all this legal crap that he has to deal with just to put his videos out because uh unlike me he is trying to make money with his videos Whereas uh, one of the reasons, you know, one of the big reasons why um, all of my videos are free to use is just I don't want to deal with the hassle. And plus, uh, if my if my videos do get do get flagged for copyright, I have every right in the world to get pissed off at these people for doing this. Like, I mean, because I'm not wanting my videos monetized because so keep the fucking ads off my videos. But apparently, oh, and uh, let me let me. Let me let me explain further here. I let me step back and correct myself. Um, when a video gets flagged for copyright, it's due to uh, YouTube's content ID system. The process is automated. It's um, it uh, Twitch has the very same thing. When um, uh, when something on your video trips the detect the when it trips the detection software, it'll uh, it'll flag it and all that. But uh. On Twitch, what it will do is it will just simply, it will simply mute just that particular offending piece of material. YouTube, on the other hand, they'll sit there and flag my entire video for copyright and they'll start sticking ads all over it. So they're not, they don't, or let me, up until, up until recently, again, up until recently, um, they'll just stick ads all over my video just for the sake of a few seconds of copyrighted footage. So, and plus uh, another reason before I forget to mention why uh, why all my videos are Creative Commons videos is, uh, I mean, I kind of, um, I think Emperor Lemon was saying the same thing. I'm kind of ignorant of this because uh, I didn't, I didn't start on YouTube as far back as he did, but uh, back when he started uh, doing like YouTube poops, it was pretty much the Wild West. I mean, everybody was borrowing footage from everybody else. I mean, freely. I mean, I kind of want to... I mean, based on that, I kind of want to go back to that kind of that kind of thing, too. I mean, Emperor Lemon said the same thing. It's how we communicate on the Internet. Through memes. You know, through, you know, borrowing other people's footage. You know, I kind of like to go back to those days. You know, we don't... I mean, yeah, bootleggers, bootleggers exist. Like, like, you know, just, just, you know, stealing, you know, stealing movies, you know, stealing Disney movies and, 
you know, reposting it on them. You know, I mean that. As far as I know, that's actually a that's actually an FBI violation. It's the same. It's those things you see on uh, VHS videos. You know, copyright infringement. You know, you're making copies of a. You know, a copy. You know, you're making copies of a. Of a Disney movie, and then you're just you're gonna turn around and sell those movies at a profit, bootlegging. I mean, yeah, I'm totally against that, but. You know, but I mean. They shouldn't be coming after you when you only, when you're only putting like a few seconds of footage on your video. So again, that's one of the reasons why all my videos are Creative Commons videos. Is I want to, you know, I want to see that. I want to see that kind of YouTube now. Oh, and um, the the Creative Commons there actually there actually are various degrees of it too. Like um, the option on YouTube, it's. The option is called attrition, or attribution, attribution. You know, all of my stuff is free to use. All I ask is, you just mention where you got it from, the original source. In fact, uh, some of these videos that I see these days, man, I'm totally going off topic here, but anyway, I, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll steer us back here, but basically, I'm, I'm starting to see, um, like in this video here, for example, if you can see in the lower left corner, pro art. I believe that's the original, uh, the original content creator, the original artist that made this this lake video. So they're they're basically uh, they're attributing this. This is the original artist, pro art. But I'm starting to see more and more videos these days do this very same thing. Whatever um whatever footage they're putting up, in some are, like in the lower left or lower right corner or whatever, they'll actually put the source as well, the source material. So, I'm starting to see that as well. That don't bother me at all. You know, they're mentioning where they got it from. Um, but anyway, um, going back to what I was originally talking about, uh, my uh, pinball session, my one-hour session, it actually went pretty damn good. Um, did pretty damn good on uh, FX3, and I actually did, I think with the exception of maybe one or two tables, I, I really kicked ass, especially on Cactus Canyon. I pretty much cru excuse me. I pretty much crushed my previous high score. So, but yeah, I'm a, but a good chunk of the night though was spent on trying to trying to get the video uploaded on YouTube. And again, I made a mistake on that. So, oh, and uh, what I what I did forget to mention is apparently we have um we have options now. Hey, right, back at the um. Up until recently, the only option a, a content creator had was to just appeal it. To appeal your when your video gets flagged, the only option you had was to appeal it. I got we got more options now. You can actually uh you can actually mute do what Twitch does. Mute that particular offending piece of the material. I didn't know that. You can do that now on YouTube. Uh, but it's it's processing as we speak. Um I'm having the uh I'm having just the music muted, but it's still in the beta stage, so it may not work. If it doesn't, then I'll just go ahead and end up deleting the entire video then. So, but right now, the video is processing on Twitch. So, what I'll probably do with that is I'll just go ahead and take the uh, I'll take that video, and uh, I'll start up. Uh, I'll I'll message all of my regulars and other people who are also interested in pinball. I'll just message all of them that video. Uh, but now, getting to so getting to my audible here. This is uh, this is this is my redirect right here. Something came up on my uh, YouTube recommendations. I I wish I knew the name of the Twitter handle, but uh, this video it was uh, done by a YouTuber named Squidoodle, um, talking about the troubled teen industry. Like talking about um these ranches, for lack of a better word, where they use what's called attack therapy. Um, and I guess Paris Hilton went to one of these. But uh basically they torture teens. And um I think the uh, technical term for it is called gaslighting. It was uh it was something I pretty much went through when I was a kid. You know, um 
Pat Benatar had it in one of her lyrics, Hell is for Children, they blacken your eyes and apologize. I, I used I, this used to happen this used to happen um uh, every so often when I was a kid. You know, I'd get smacked upside the head by my dad and afterwards he he'd apologize to me afterwards and you know, that kind of thing. It's basically gaslighting. I don't in his case though in his case it wasn't it wasn't methodical, it wasn't intentional. And he's just he's got a short temper. So but anyway, at least technically it's gaslighting. It's where they 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 um physically and emotionally tear you down and then build you back up in their image. It's gaslighting. I think that's the technical team. I think that's the name for it. But um but this video that I was watching about some of these again like like Quavo High School or Quavo Canyon School or something like that. There's, I don't remember the names of these schools, but I'll just call them ranches, because they're, that's basically what they are. They're, they're not, you know, they're not in the city or anything. They're, they're located in remote areas like on mountaintops and whatnot. That way, so uh, if the teenagers try to escape, they're gonna have a harder time of it. You know, you know these um, these ranches, sometimes they're um. They're in deep areas where that are inhabited by wild animals. Again, the whole design is just to keep teenagers from escaping. So, but yeah, um, but a bunch of but a bunch of teenagers are actually speaking out against this. So, but yeah, but again, um, but uh, apparently, uh, Paris Hilton, I think. She was uh she was cooped up in one of these, and um. No, let me let, let me let me retrace it a bit. Um. She uh Squidoodle actually put out a video. It's a good thing I wrote. Good thing I typed this down. Or good thing I wrote this down. Um, Doctor Phil, legendary um psychologist Doctor Phil had his own talk show and everything. He was actually in, I think he was actually in bed with uh with one of them. Like I said, I don't know the name of the ranch. It's like, like, Cuervo Canyon School or something like that. But he was, I think he was actually in bed with these people. Like, um, these people, I think they were, uh, they were actually paying him money. They're, they're basically paying him hush money, paying him money to look the other way. But at the same time, I think they were also giving him even more money. They're probably uh, paying him some money to send all these troubled teens their way. Like, they'd come on a show, and, you know, they'd explain their problems, and then he would, um, uh, then, then he would actually send them off to, he would send them off to this ranch. I think that's how they were doing it. But, like I said, I only, I only saw this, um, Dr., uh, Dr. Phil video, like, I want to say about, uh, about six months ago, when I last saw this video. But I, but yeah, I, I don't, I, if I can remember to, and or if I have time to, I might want to look into this further. But yeah, I, I, but yeah, I remember, I remember, um, Squid Hotel had a video about him. Like he, had, he basically wouldn't really help to help these teenagers at all. He'd, he'd say something, something, something helpful, for lack of a better word. And then he would uh he would ship him off to these um he would ship him off to the school that was uh paid him to keep quiet about it about all the torturing they were doing. Oh, and also um and uh I just thought of this too. Or actually, good thing I wrote this down. Uh, Frank Zappa was also talking about these places as well. Like back in the eighties, um there were these uh. There were these places that you can bring your kids to, like I don't I don't know if he called it military school, but there were these places where they would reprogram your child, child, and then send them back out, you know, making them a more beneficial member of society or something like that. I can't remember exactly how he said it, but yeah, he, but uh, around his time, these places existed, and now that I think about it, this um, Squidoodle's latest video on this was talking about that as well. She was explaining the history 
of the trouble teen. In fact, I, I just thought of this too. This is this is pretty much what triggered me into checking this out. Is uh, is it, it's act, it's actually called the troubled teen industry. Like it is, this is like uh, these places aren't like super unique. Like there is there's actually many of these places strong throughout the country. But yeah, I think she said, um, like, it's called Synanon. Like, Synanon, something like that. Um, I guess kind of a precursor to, uh, Al Anon, like Alcoholics Anonymous, and I think there is another one. I wish I knew what it was. But yeah, there was Al Anon, there was, uh, there was another type of Anon, but yeah, there was, uh, it started with, with a Synanon. Back in like the fifties, but uh, originally it was—I think it was just Synanon, and that was it, one location. But now, this day and age, they're all over the place. But yeah, and um, and then um, it also uh, it also reminded me. It, I think this. This also did it. This also did it for me as well. Um, back in the '80s when I was a kid, um, this was this was when cable TV first came out, HBO. And it, this was also back when uh, HBO didn't run 24/7. Um, it only ran from like I want to say from 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. Like it was only on for like three hours a day, like back in the early '80s. But uh, they had a movie on there called Brainwash. And it was um, it was and it, when I saw this, but when I saw the Scudoodle video, it totally reminded me of the show that, that I saw when I was a kid, uh, Brainwash. Um, but it was um, it was basically a mental health center. And in fact, maybe, maybe this movie was based on Synanon. Um, I think there was another one that came into existence shortly after Synanon. I don't remember what it was, but anyway, getting back to what I was saying, um, but uh, I, maybe this movie was based on was based on Synanon. You know, but anyway, I think, um, I think, but yeah, it, it was based, it was, it was a camp, and I think, um, I think it was, I think it was a marriage camp. I don't, like a, a marriage retreat or something like that. I don't remember the exact plot. Like I said, I haven't seen the show in years, so, But uh, it was a uh, one particular scene I, I that that I do remember was um one of the guys in that one of the guys one of the patients named Buddy he was like he was like really fat he was like obese and um and one of their methods of therapy is they would uh they would tell first they tell Buddy to take all of his clothes off so he's kind of standing there buck naked with his hands over his dick or over his cock and balls you know that kind of thing now. Lauren Hutton. Lauren Hutton was on there. A legendary actress. Yeah, she was on there. And she was the, she was the chief counselor. Uh, but she would sit there, okay, buddy, go inside this cage, buddy. And, you know, he'd be, old naked buddy would go in the cage. And and then, um, she, she would do something like, see, something like, uh, see, this is where pigs belong, buddy. They belong in cages. And, um, and then um some what are the um what are the big huge muscular bodybuilder orderlies for lack of a better word would come up with a with a bucket full of pig full of pig slop and then he'd um he'd grab buddy by the back of the head and crank it like right up against the right against the cage and start shoving all this food in his mouth what do pigs eat buddy that's right pigs eat slop and, and you know this big guy shoving food in his mouth and everybody's all freaking out and I think Buddy was like crying afterwards, but that, but yeah, like I said, like I said, this um, this whole video that I watched, and um, the Doctor Phil that I saw too, it totally reminded me of this movie. So yeah, um, but again, I do plan on uh, I I'm hoping to be able to l actually look into this further. So, but like I said, I just saw these two videos and that was it. So, um, but there is a there is a Twitter handle. I don't remember what it was. 
Um, I wish I knew her. I guess I could probably look it up. But it, it's probably going to take some time here. Because uh, I'm, in, I'm in the middle of recording right now. And they're, uh, you know, I already have a video going. So it's going to take a while. In fact, it's... There it goes. Yeah, it's still taking forever. I'm not even going to bother. But yeah, anyway... But like I said, this this is this is pretty much what made me um kind of kind of redirect the rest of this cast. But yeah, it's pretty messed up stuff, and in my opinion, um these these ranches I think are actually worse than uh worse than state prison. I mean, in state prison, I mean, at least you can still make phone calls. You can still. You know, you could form, you know, you could form friendships, gangs. Um, generally speaking, I, if the TV show Oz is anything to go by, I mean, you're, you're actually giving a lot, giving a lot more freedom than these teenagers are given in these, um, in these ranches. You know, again, you can form friendships, you can hang out, and, you know, you can, you can do, you can do outside activities, um, you know, it's got a library, you know, or I'm kind of basing this part on a Shawshank Redemption, but, you know, there's a library in there. You can read books and all that. So, again, you're given a lot more freedom in prisons than you are in these these ranches that I'm looking at. In these, you basically can do absolutely nothing. All you can do is just sit there and take the torture that they inflict on you. So... I'd also, <laughs> I'd also think it'd be kind of funny if, uh, if anybody's ever, um, if anybody's ever watched the YouTube show Analyzing Evil, I just thought of this. It would be kind of funny if, uh, if we, if they ever had Doctor Phil on there. In fact, I might do this at the risk of being laughed at by by everybody else in that community. I want to see if, um, I think his name's the Vile Eye, but I want to see if you, uh, if his, uh, if his next episode would be on Dr. Phil. <laughs> like, like he's just, like, hello everyone. And, and welcome to the 45th episode of Analyzing Evil. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Dr. Phil, the famous, psycholo the famous psychologist and TV doctor who knowingly sends teenagers to a camp where they will be, tor will be abused and tortured. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, that, that would be kind of funny if he did an episode like that. But, yeah. But, again, this, um... But, uh, I'll probably, um... Uh, but, yeah, I do I do plan on eventually looking into this a little bit further. So, I mean, this... And this whole thing that I'm talking about here, it all happened because of a YouTube recommendation. So, I guess, uh... <coughs> excuse me. Oh, hell, the algorithm! Okay, um, but otherwise, I believe I've said all the things that I wanted to say, and um, as this is an actual full-blown video, this is still going to take me a while to upload anyway, and again, I still got other shit on my plate. Hell, I still got a blog post I got to finish up. Um, I pretty much finished up the stuff that I did yesterday. I still got to catch up on the things that I did today, so, so yeah, I'm still going to be pretty busy. And not to mention, again, I got a video here that's gonna, probably going to take a while to upload. So, so yeah, I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead and stop here. So, we're now's about as good a time to stop as any. But otherwise, hey, thanks a lot for um, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, this will be my last cast for the week. Um, you probably won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, but until then. Thanks again for dropping by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye now.